What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. This is another Chance Encounter. I'm joined today with Brian Adams. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. Well, the SEC says that you can advertise to millionaires if you do a 506C filing. Or you can do a 506B filing with your friend and family, but you can't do both. In front of a house is going to be torn down soon. I understand that there are power lines that are getting kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg, and that there is... We're seeing, uh, we're seeing more properties like this being built. Let's do some stuff. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey Dan, how are you? I'm quite well and I'm acting like an idiot on my camera so I can share my screen. So there's lots of us. This series here, I very quickly uh, get together with some commercial real estate investors uh, and, and people who are in the directly uh, related uh, industries looking to code GP and whatnot. And uh, what I do is I find out the investor's motivation. And uh, then after that, we talk about the role that they would serve inside an apartment complex deal. So if I hit this button right here to show my screen again, all right, here's what I got. Uh, so I have the six roles down here, but I found that uh, especially people who are just looking to get into uh, multifamily uh, real estate investment or, or just the industry as a whole, they don't know which one they're actually going to have. So that's why I started to go for the motivations. So the first one is that they want to preserve their purchasing power. In other words, they have some sort of nest egg. They're concerned about inflation. They're concerned that it's all going to be eroded away. So that's one motivation. The next one is the one that applies most closely to me, which is that trading time for wealth me personally as uh, my background is in tech so i could go for a high paying salary and then pay income tax it and then dump that into my investments to increase my wealth or i could just pivot over to uh, the actual co-gping and uh, ownership uh, group of the investment so that way i skip that extra step the next reason why people get into uh, or want a new apartment complex deal is because they're trying to fast track the retirement and they want to be personally active in that process they don't really trust the bank or whatnot and so they want to know more the next one are the people who are unbelievably ambitious if they see somebody who has a huge yacht they want to have a much bigger yacht than they do in other words they want to buy their entire hometown you know there's basically no limit to their ambition so in in an apartment deal that's handy because you know that they'll work themselves to death the last one is that they've got some sort of irrational need to help the tenants. Now, I'm not saying irrational is bad because it just might mean that they don't necessarily need to squeeze every last penny of profit out of each deal. They might have some sort of social group that they want to focus on and assist more than others. So uh, out of those, uh, how would you describe your own situation, uh, uh, Brian, as a uh, the investments that uh, the apartment complexes that you'd be interested to get into uh, in the future. Yeah, it would definitely be uh, preserving my purchasing power. Um, and I think we're going to do a, a separate segment on this, but, you know, my wife's family has a single family office and um, I didn't know what that was until I married into the family. But, you know, um, I've since come to realize that when you have a corpus of assets, that's terrific. Um, but it's also a real challenge because what you're trying to do is maintain a quality of life over multiple uh, generational time horizon. And when you actually break that down and you think, okay, well, I've got this, this bucket of money, but inflation is going to be 2 or 3% annualized, and my spend rate to maintain my quality of life is going to be 4 to 5%, plus the exponential growth of my family, right? I have two kids. My two kids have two kids. Um, when you put all that together – um, you're really trying to maintain 10 to 12% annualized returns. And you just can't do that in fixed income, period. Probably mm -hmm. can't do that in private credit. 
And so real estate and private equity are one of the few places where you can, you know, realistically hit those type of numbers without taking on a ton of risk. And so that's how I think about investing into real estate and other real assets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, you know, the, the different family offices, uh, they're, they're looking all the time for, for things and, and they've got the, uh, the financing to, uh, to go fetch it. Uh, that's, uh, that's really awesome. And I, I appreciate that level of insight. Uh, the next one that I've done is uh, for the actual apartment complex. I've narrowed it down to six different roles that you could have as a co-GP. And so I'm just going to go through all those real quick. Me personally, uh, especially because I'm from the internet, I'm kind of stuck with being a repositioner. All of us are somewhat in the job of, uh, of having to do acquisitions, but uh, being a repositioner basically means you have to find properties that are not at their highest and best use uh, one way or another. And one of the simplest ways to basically take a property and say, okay, I know I'm going to be able to get more money out of this property than how I picked it up is to talk to a contractor. So you're talking to somebody who will make the place actually nicer. And uh, so that way you can actually charge more in rent. But the other problem, if you're like me, or also if you're like uh, Brian and uh, Excelsior Capital, um, you're not going to be able to run the asset yourself. So you're going to have to find the operations people. And so, yeah, they unclog the toilets and unclog the sinks and all that kind of stuff. They have absolutely no business doing the contractor work, especially like capital expenditures, you know, because uh, you're going to end up with bits and bobs that aren't square and whatnot. But I also include the money going down the toilet just because, you know, the, the actual bookkeeping and that sort of handling and marketing, making sure that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, you always have low vacancy. That's one of the main problems. But the thing is, especially because my background is in digital security, I know that everything can be spoofed, including operations reports or contractor reports. So I have no choice, but I have to have a local. You have to have your boots on the ground, somebody who can check in on a moment's notice because I can't. I'm not flying there. So that's basically what most people would think is an apartment deal. But the truth is you have to go to a financier such as a bank. Uh, or, you know, sometimes you can uh, find a, a private equity, but uh, we'll uh, talk about that after. But uh, you go to the financier and say, hey, I want to buy this building. Here's my whole team, all that kind of stuff. Give me a whole whack of money so I can buy this building. Now, the thing that the casual observer walking along might not know, though, is the bank is going to say, OK, who's your sponsor? Who's the KP? Who's who actually already owns a similar asset? and has a net worth of at least the amount of the loan. If you have all of those pieces, you have an apartment deal. So those are the six uh, different roles there. Uh, how would you describe uh, the balance of, uh, of, of work and uh, roles uh, for, for your organization, Brian? Yeah, so we are a sponsor operator. So we go out, we source the deals ourselves, we quote unquote run the deals, we raise capital from our network of individuals and families, and then we manage those assets on behalf of our investors. So today we probably have around a $425 million portfolio gross valuation um, across, call it 14 markets in the Southeast and the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, so basically, uh, the, the people to reach out to you then, uh, like, uh, what would be the perfect role of somebody? Like, what, which of these roles do you tend to be uh, looking for the most as far as uh, helping you out? And, or, you know, if somebody's out there and wants to close a deal, uh, like, who, who can you help the most? Yeah, I would say that people that um, maybe have the opportunity um, but don't have access to either the equity or the debt. Um, you know, we act as personal guarantors typically um, on these acquisitions. And then we have a very robust investment community um, of individuals and families. So that's probably the most logical person to reach out to us. Mm-hmm. All right, great. And uh, what about a buy box? Uh, what what uh, sort of unit count, uh, geographic areas? Uh, uh, what are you careful, uh, like willing to tell us as far as, uh, you know, what you're definitely interested in if we've got it in hand? Yeah, so we actually don't do apartments. Um, okay. We only do commercial, which for us can mean anything from office to industrial to flex to medical to retail. And it's, it's really, frankly, less about the product and more about the product offering. 
and what I mean by that is um, I learned early on in my career that uh, being pigeonholed into a specific geographic location or a specific product type, um, the winds change pretty quickly and they seem like they change faster and faster. Now I've been in the business 11 years. I've been through two cycles already. Um, what we're trying to do is solve for three things. Access to direct co-investment opportunities, double digit yield, tax benefits that come from real estate ownership directly. Um, so we have a lot of flexibility there. Um, I would say predominantly we are in the Southeast and the interior Midwest, but um, the nice thing about being a fundless sponsor is that we can kind of go where we find opportunity. Thank you very much. It's been fantastic. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you like these kinds of videos, all it means is that if you're on YouTube, you'll see these videos as a suggestion and uh, you can ignore me just as much as you normally do because most people just hop onto YouTube, search for what they're looking for and um, watch that instead of the suggestions. But uh, please do because that way YouTube will pay for this stuff instead of me. Anyway, thanks again, Brian. You have a wonderful day. All right. Thanks, Dan.